Hello, friends. So, I've been doing streams that are unlisted and making VODs available. I figured, hey, why not just go public? Okay, so, welcome, friends. <clears throat> this is the fifth... Anyway, it's a, it's a subsequent uh, stream in my series of doing autopilot stuff in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, in this particular one, we have gotten to where we needed to gather a bunch of science, and I lashed together a really quick and dirty uh, airplane with all the science and no wings. And Bob, our scientist, has been running around the center gathering science from all over the place. And that took me a while. I had to get the hang of it. I had to make sure my little autopilot was doing the right thing. And uh, I had to get the hang of uh, X science, which I hadn't used in many, many years. I got that working again. Um, I was surprised that it now it has this window, which is basically push buttons that say, here's science you can do, push the button to do it, which really simplifies things. Got the hang of how all that worked. Um, found out from the la end of the last video the reason why Bob couldn't pop his parachute is because to use a personal parachute, you have to be a pilot or have a full star. And Bob doesn't have enough experience to have a full star yet. I believe that's when you can go in, you go into orbit and you get enough experience to have a have a one star pilot or a one star scientist or whatever. Okay, so here we are. This is the beast. Sorry for the jet engine noises. Basically, it's uh, some fuel and a jet engine and all the science and a science container so I can gather science and record the experiments into the container and gather more science over and over and over again. Uh, it's piloted by a scientist so I can reset the materials bay and the mystery goo so I can get those and I can reset them and go somewhere else and get more. Uh, I've got an antenna because once you take a crew report, you can't take another crew report until you transmit it or return it. So the antenna is just for crew reports. Uh, I was going to try something where I gather all the science and I transmit everything I can transmit and I don't keep the science until there's zero transmit. But uh, basically doing that, I had to sit here and you know, gather some science and transmit some of it and hit the... the uh, warp to sunrise button over and over and over again. So warp to sunrise, get some science, transmit it, warp to sunrise, transmit it. So instead, I went around, I just, I, I gathered all the science in the container and only the crew reports got transmitted back. We still occasionally had to sit and wait for a bit for our electric charge to come back. Despite the fact that we have um, 13 solar panels so our charge rate during the day should be good. Anyway, so we're at, at what I'm going to call the last one. Um, we are landed at Kerbin Shores. So I went through the whole Space Center, and then I came down the, la the landing air uh, crawler way, and then the, the launch pad. The launch pad I've already done all the science on. And now I'm out here, and what I was doing Apparently, I have already got a materials study done for... Oh, no, I haven't, because the materials study is currently... Science, excuse me, the science Junior has to be restored. So I can do some science with it. There we go. So when I went into a, a new biome, uh, it would give me a little blip to let me know I've gone somewhere new, and I can stop my roll and hit boom just go up the list and click all the buttons then i come over here and i'm going to keep all of them except the crew report which i'm going to transmit so keep 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 and the crew report is transmitted and you notice my electric charge goes down very rapidly and the science checklist is updated down here so you can see bright is stuff that's already uh, recorded. 
the stuff I transmitted is recorded already. And the rest of this is a DM because I have it on board. And this shows me that I have... I could come back later and get more science and material study and mystery goo. Not a lot. 0 0.7 and 1.6. So uh, if we're really desperate for science, I can make a second trip and grab those 7 tenths and 1.6 science per biome. But that's not going to be very much. Once I've gathered everything, uh, that kept it all in the experiments, and I want to collect it into the container, like that. And that resets all the experiments, so for instance I could gather more temperatures and pressures. Uh, separately, um, the materials bay and the containment unit are... Well, you have to have a scientist reset them explicitly. So we are going to hop out real quick. And Bob can reach them, so we hit restore. And that restores one of them. And we hit restore on the other one. And it's operational again. And at this point, if I needed to, I could do another EVA. So I could take an EVA report. I've already gathered the EVA report from here, so we're done. Okay. Now at this point, I could recover the vessel, but let's show off the script a little bit here real quick. What does it do? Well, I don't have action groups set up. I don't, I don't have those enabled. You have to spend a lot of money uh, upgrading your, your base before you can use action groups. So normally I would, you know, action group one would be accelerate, action group two would be decelerate and so on. But I do have RCS and SAS and lights and gear and brakes. Now, brakes are weird because you hit the B key and it toggles them on. You release the B key, it toggles them off. So those are kind of wonky to use for control scheme, unless you really want that on-off behavior. But what I want to do is I want to set my speed. And basically, I'm going to say, if RCS is off, we're stopped. We're going to command stop, which means we're going to hit brakes and get us to a stop. Uh, if RCS is on then I'll look at the lights. If the lights are on, I want to go fast. If they're off, I'll go slow. Let's try that. Let's get pointed over at the at there. And I use a simple proportional controller, so you hear the engine spooling up and down. It's got a 10% minimum on it. Uh, if you take the jet engine under 10%, it flames out. Uh, I am pretty sure there's no problem with bring it back up again, but I'm trying to do a little bit of role-playing of the situation. And uh, if Jeb, you know, if Bob is tooling around and moving forward and coming back, he's not going to be turning his engine on and off. Jet engines, you don't do that with. So we're moving at um, 5 meters per second across the surface. I could turn on the lights, and that's going to accelerate me up to 20. Now you notice that ahead of me is the runway, and it's got a bit of a of a lump. So if we just coasted up, we'd hit that lump, and we'd start coasting up, and we would slow down. Well, what happens with the proportional controller? Let's take a look. Ooh, we ramped up to full throttle to try to accelerate back up to 20 meters per second. And when we go down. We hit, you see the brakes flickering on and off. That keeps us at our speed. So we don't allow ourselves to go too fast. Uh, if we start going too slow, we ramp up the engines. Uh, it's not a full PID controller of any sort. I mean, if you're on an uphill for a long time, it won't find a steady state of the engine that'll keep you at speed. It will simply run you slowly and have the engine spooled up. And... For this build, apparently I set my fast speed to 10 meters per second. Uh, I was fiddling around at one point with 20 meters per second as my fast speed. That's really great if you're trying to go a long ways away. At 10 meters per second, I believe I can still turn. Yeah. If you're going too fast and you try to turn, it'll start, it'll start to tilt up on one wheel and you need to turn back the other way to get it back down or you're, you're going to roll. 
at 20 meters per second it does that. So at 10 I can still steer. So I could use 10 meters per second as my slow speed. The downside is how far does it take me to stop? Let's see. Turn off RCS. And there we go. So how does this work? Let's turn on my code editor. And let's take a look at the microcode for unbelie unnaturally belligerent not. See here the original code I had. This is actually code I resurrected from a long time ago and started modifying. Uh, basically, let's go down to the control sequence. This is a proportional controller. So our command and throttle, which is going to be in the range of 10% to 100%, is the commanded force divided by the max thrust of the ship. So we're going to command a force and that will be translated into a throttle. The force is whatever acceleration I want times the mass. Okay, so the heavier we are, the more force we're going to ask for for the given acceleration. Notice how this is working our way outwards in the, in the, in the control scheme. Uh, in order to control our acceleration, uh, control, so we're controlling our force by con we're controlling our throttle in order to control the force. We're controlling the force in order to, to control the acceleration. And the acceleration is the speed error times a gain. So there's a gain of a controller. But basically, the higher the gain, the faster the controller will attempt to achieve the goal. So a lower gain would be a slower acceleration, uh, slower response. So in this case, I've got acceleration gain that I have set. Um, it's a constant. And what is a speed error? It's the desired speed, the command, the desired, the current speed minus the commanded speed. Now, I used a different convention than I'm used to. Uh, I'm accustomed to the error being. Oh, this is correct. Error is the observed value minus the desired value. So here's our speed error, current speed minus commanded speed. I have from time to time reversed those. And that gets confusing because that's the way, if you go into that with a mindset that the error is commanded minus actual, uh, it flips sides. And here we're getting our current speed and our TWR. We don't actually use the TWR in our equations. So I could have set the throttle from the acceleration directly by dividing by TWR, but this actually isn't TWR. This is actually thrust to mass ratio. Thrust to weight would have to take into account gravity, and then I would have to divide it back out again, so blah, blah on that. Okay, that's a very simple auto throttle. It simply sets your, your throttle higher if you need to, if you're if you're too slow and lower if you're too fast uh, there's one additional thing well here's our commanded speed so anytime RCS or lights changes we go through the logic to select our speed oh well there's our 20 versus 10 right there uh, let's so if I turn the lights on and off, it's going to use the 10. If I turn the RCS on off, it was going to use the 20. So we'll fix that. The other thing we do is here. So if we are going too fast, I turn on the brakes. And if we're going too slow, I turn off the brakes. So we're keeping, you know, we're cycling through the brakes as we're tapping on the brakes as we're close. And that's the whole wall of the throttle. That means I can sit here and control this as you saw, just by turning the RCS on and off and turning the lights on and off. And I think that's enough. This could be a very short stream. It's only 15 minutes long. Let's recover the vessel and look at our science and cheer a little bit, and I'll do a save. Uh, we're probably going to have a whole load of science. I'm going to have to go work out my priority list. I think I know what it is, but uh, I won't do that on stream. Because I have a cat that's absolutely going nuts down there. Meow. Meow. 
So this is the reason I do short streams. Because this little one, when she decides she wants to be picked up, it takes her 5 or 10 or 15 minutes sometimes to ramp up from quietly meowing at me to standing at the bottom of my chair and just screaming. And now she's squirming, so apparently she wants something more. So I'm going to go work that out. Meanwhile, we can look over here. We've got 220 science to spend. So we'll, we'll do that soon. So 220 science, and we got all of this. That is just an absolute shed load of science. We uh, returned all the parts we built, so we didn't cost very much. And Bob didn't get any experience from doing this because you're just rolling around at KS KSC. But this means that we've got these two, which are adding up to 90, and we have already picked up the electrics so these two plus one more here and it will probably be advanced flight control I am not absolutely sure um, it might be space exploration or it might be well I don't think it's gonna be miniaturization but we'll look at that and I will come back and and uh, we will have spent that we'll figure out what the next thing is we want to do next mission and i will grab whatever re whatever science i need in order to do that mission so until then have a good day